Joining us now is Eric Mandel, Guggenheim Security Senior Managing Director in the tech, media, and telecom sectors. He joins us on set. It's good to have you here. We, I mean, we have to start here. Everybody had been anticipating this, but does this just throw cold water on a marketplace, particularly big cap tech, which over recent years has been some of the biggest acquirers of other companies? Um, does it change things? Let's answer a great question. First of all, it's wonderful to be here with both of you. Um, I'd say a couple of things. Number one, the FDC, the DOJ, and Europe have tried really hard over the last year or two to get in the middle of big tech. Um, they may end up being successful, and in this case, we're going to have to get very deep, and we're going to see what the facts are and, and where the law takes it. But there is a view that the FTC takes a position that can be very aggressive and then is pushed back. And that pushing back process is healthy. That should happen. That's a process that boards have to deal with and public investors have to deal with. What I can tell you is every public board we're talking to right now is super focused on this topic. And if they make an M&A move, or if they're even contemplating an M&A move, they are spending a fantastic amount of time, not just with their corporate development team or their comms team, but with their legal team, to determine if the transaction is really anti-competitive and where are they really going to be able to take that deal. And the last kind of part of that calculus is, are they willing not just to spend the money, but the time? You, know, you might remember, John, the last time we were on, it was a, a while ago, and Activision had just been announced. Mm -hmm. Hasn't closed yet. But if you look at what the ARBs are saying, there's a very high likelihood that that deal closes. We don't know. We'll never know until it actually does. But there's a calculus that those organizations, that those chief executives have to make to say, am I willing not just to spend the money, but the time? Deals that used to be able to close in three, four, five, six months might take more than a year. And you have to be OK with that. Your customers have to understand why that is. And there's always the risk that it doesn't close. But, but to answer your question, I, I, I think it is a very important part of the M&A calculus. Yeah. But I don't think it is in any way hindering the conversations we're having at the moment. OK, so when you see Cisco buying Splunk last week, biggest acquisition in that company's history, right. uh, IBM, Aptio, right. uh, some of the other deals that we've seen announced here in recent weeks or recent months, are you seeing more deal flow start to come through despite that calculus? or? I guess, factoring in that calculus? Right, Morgan, it's a great question. The short answer is yes. So I, I, there are two major things going on right now. There's this massive pressure that we're all experiencing on interest rates. And it's not just the higher level of interest rates. It's the unknown. Uh, you, know, you have Jamie Dimon coming out and saying Fed funds may go to seven. You know, some of us are old enough to remember that you know, seven is not wild compared to history. So. As you think about the M&A process, as interest rates are pushing up, the natural inclination is to pull back and say, am I going to do this deal? But we've actually seen the opposite for a very simple reason. The other side of the equation is valuation.